Hey folks, welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed. Today we're diving into a story that's equal parts epic, tragic, and absolutely mind-blowing. It's the kind of tale that makes you question if it's real or just something out of a blockbuster war movie. Imagine a tank that can fire while sprinting over hills, dodges enemy targeting with AI, and costs more than a small island in the Caribbean. Oh, and it's from a country that didn't even have a proper tank program 40 years ago. This isn't sci-fi. This is the K-2 Black Panther, South Korea's answer to the fact that, yeah, they can't rely on American hand-me-downs forever. And if North Korea ever decides to make a move, this tank might be the only thing standing between Seoul and total chaos. To understand the K-2, go back to the 1970s. South Korea was still rebuilding, their army rolling around in outdated M48 patents. Meanwhile, North Korea had thousands of tanks, many of them Soviet-made and still a threat. So Seoul said, we're doing this ourselves. First came the K-1, then the K-1A-1, but both were basically upgraded M1 Abrams with Korean license plates. The K-2, that was the real declaration of independence. Development started in the late 1990s, led by the Agency for Defense Development, ADD. Budget, $350 million. Timeline, supposed to be done by 2008. Reality, delayed repeatedly thanks to engine issues, suspension problems, and one particularly embarrassing moment when the autoloader jammed during a live demo. Yeah, not ideal. But by 2014, the first K2 rolled off the line, and let's just say, it turned heads. Let's talk specs, because the K2 doesn't just play in the big leagues, it rewrites the rules. 120mm 55 smoothbore gun, same as the latest Abrams and Leopard 2A7, but here's the kicker, it's auto-loaded, meaning a crew of three instead of four. Faster reloads? Yes. Fewer lives at risk? Also yes. 1500 horsepower diesel engine, hit 70 kilometers per hour, 43 miles per hour on road, and thanks to a hydro pneumatic suspension, it can lean into turns like a sports car or elevate one side to fire from behind hills. That's not just smart, that's cheating. Fire control system uses AI to calculate lead, wind, even barrel wear. You can fire accurately while moving at full speed over rough terrain. Try doing that in a T-72. But it's not all perfect. The K2's active protection system? Still in testing. No hard kill defense like Trophy or Arena. That's a massive gap against modern anti-tank missiles. And the price? $8.5 million per unit. More than an Abrams. For a country with a relatively small army, that's uh, ambitious. Here's the truth. South Korea only has about 200 K2s, that's not enough to replace their entire fleet, so they're betting big on exports. Poland bought 180 K2s and fast-track delivery by making their own version, the K2PL. They didn't wait, they needed something modern now with Russia breathing down their neck. But there's a catch. The K2 was never designed for mass production. The engine? A German MPU knockoff, but South Korea had to reverse engineer it after Germany blocked exports. And even now, production is slow, only about 36 tanks per year. So while Poland loves it, the K2's real test isn't the battlefield, it's the factory floor. Let's be real, the K2 is impressive, but is it really better than the Abrams or Leopard? Not quite. It lacks a proven active protection system, it's armor, composite, but details are classified and likely not as strong as the Chobham in Western tanks. And while the AI fire control is slick, it hasn't been tested in real combat. Plus the cost, at $8.5 million, it's expensive for what it is, and with only 200 in service, it's more of a symbol than a strategic game changer, at least for South Korea. But here's the win. It proves that small nations can build world-class weapons. No US tech, no Russian help, just Korean engineering, grit, and a serious grudge against dependency. 
So what's the legacy of the K2 Black Panther? It's not just a tank, it's a statement. We don't need your tanks. We'll build our own. It's fast, smart, and lethal. But let's be honest, not without flaws. No hard kill APS, production delays, a price tag that makes budget hawks sweat. But here's the truth. It's a symbol of something bigger. In a world where small nations are expected to buy their security from the usual suspects, the US, Russia, France, South Korea said, nah, we'll do it ourselves. And they pulled it off. Not perfectly, but proudly. It's a reminder that modern warfare isn't just about who has the biggest gun. It's about who can innovate, adapt, and stand on their own two feet, even when the geopolitical ground is shaking beneath them. If you made it this far, thank you, really. This channel means the world to me, and I pour everything into making these videos as deep, honest, and engaging as possible. But lately, views have dropped. The algorithm's been rough. I won't lie, it's been tough to keep going. So, if you enjoyed this one, and if you believe in content that goes beyond clickbait and actually respects your intelligence, I'd be beyond grateful if you hit that like button, subscribe, and maybe even share this with that one friend who still thinks the Sherman was the pinnacle of tank engineering. Every like, every comment, every new subscriber, it's not just a number, it's a vote. A sign that this kind of deep, critical, no BS military storytelling still matters. And hey, drop a comment. Which tank should we break down next? The T-14 Armada, the Leopard 2A8, or maybe the M1E3? I'm always watching what you ask for, because this channel isn't just my passion. It's a conversation. And honestly, some of the best deep dives we've done started right here in the comments. If you're into forgotten tech, flawed super weapons, and the real stories behind the world's most advanced machines, you're in the right place. There's more coming. Big reveals, obscure programs, and systems so strange you'll think I made them up. This is Military Forces Unleashed, where the future of war is already here. And right now, it's wearing Korean steel.